Hi everyone. I've been getting a lot of questions, so I thought I would share a video really quick about uh, render performance with two 980 Ti's in uh, Octane. And the 980 Ti's are basically a brand new graphics card from NVIDIA. They're high-end gaming graphics cards, but they're perfect for rendering with GPUs. And so GPU renderers like Octane are super fast with it. Um, this scene I'm going to use is from Von Ling. He did a Gumroad tutorial that shows you how to model this scene and render it out. You should definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And so we're going to come in here into Moto and we'll just hit render. And so you can see immediately with the two graphics cards in the preview render size, how quickly that starts resolving. We'll uh, bring this a little bit smaller and just move this over. And so you can see you can move around in the viewport and this will start resolving really quickly with the lighting and everything going on. And you can leave that and it'll just essentially keep rendering and rendering and rendering up to the, the samples amount that you've set. So you can set that really high, you can set it low, whatever works for you. And so at this size, it renders pretty fast and I can make this a little bit bigger and you'll see how quickly it still renders. So we're, uh, 10 seconds deep into the render as right now and it's telling us that 2000 samples at this resolution is going to take three minutes to complete and so that's really fast and by comparison we've left that at 20 seconds I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller again and let it run for uh, 10 seconds just to make a point all right that's 10 seconds and so what we're going to do is switch over to uh, Moto's preview render. And now this isn't going to give us the same results visually because the lighting in Octane is different. The material is a little bit different. But to give you an idea of how slow a CPU preview render in Moto is compared to Octane, look how that renders out. And like I said, it looks different because the lighting is a bit different. But for comparison reasons, it still gives you an idea of this and that. And this is probably over 10 seconds now. So I'm going to go back over here and um, address something that you may have noticed. Uh, when this was rendering a second ago, you'll notice that viewport performance inside of Moto is really, really bad. That's essentially because both graphics cards are at 100% load, and they're essentially putting everything into getting this render done, which means it leaves both Windows as well as Moto's OpenGL viewport with nothing to work with. And so the solution to this is, I'm gonna pause it because it's laggy. I'm gonna pause it, come into here into the CUDA settings, you can see it has both graphics cards listed. So what I can do is set my display graphics card to use priority settings and just set that to low. And what that's going to do is going to give my render times a bit of a hit, but it's going to give me better performance in Moto while it renders. And so we'll let that go again. And uh, you'll see how much smoother it is now in the viewport. Still not 100%, but way better than it was a second ago. And so we'll come back in here, let this render for a second. And this is saying it's going to resolve at, you know, under two minutes still. And so it used to be roughly five samples per second. And now it's something like 4.4, which isn't bad, especially when you're doing preview renders. And one other thing you can do too, if you do have two cards, just turn off your display card. And so it doesn't even use it. And you'll see that uh, the performance with the rendering is still super fast. And now your samples have gone down to 2.5 ish. And so it's halved from what two cards will give. But if you have a really nice card like the 980 Ti, you'll see it still renders very quickly. And then when you decide you're going to do your full resolution render, just go back up to full priority on both cards. And so what I'm going to do now is render this out at 2K. And so I've turned the settings back to use the cards fully. And I've turned off the uh, preview size. And so let me just drag this up and drag it out. Like I said, this is 2000 pixels resolution. We'll just go to half size. And um, I'm gonna leave this for roughly 10 minutes or so just to give you an idea of what a 10 minute render at 2K on a scene like this with lighting and reflective and blurry reflections is gonna look like. So I'll just speed up the video from this point forward and we'll check it out in a second. So I'm going to stop it now really quick. We're at five minutes right here at 2K resolution. So let me just zoom in and show you what kind of grain we're looking at for something like this. It's definitely grainy at 100%, um, but not super bad. In a production environment, you could probably get away with this if you're trying to do stuff really quickly. 
So at 2000 pixels resolution, this is the type of grain you'd look at in a scene like this, which is not bad at all. And so if you went up to 4K, it would uh, resolve even better because if you zoom back out and that grain wouldn't be as noticeable. So I'm going to continue letting this go for another five minutes and see what it looks like then. All right, here we are at 10 minutes and two seconds, as you can see down here. Um, we'll zoom in to full res, and you can see it's still a bit noisy in areas like this over here, down here a little bit, and um, this is double res. Up here, it's still a bit noisy, but if you zoom back out to uh, half res, looks pretty good here. Like I said, I don't know if you would want to use this as a final render for anything, but in 10 minutes, you just can't beat that. That's where GPUs and graphics cards and stuff like that, they really, really excel in doing uh, unbiased rendering like this. So for comparison's sake, we'll come over here, and um, this is um, a 4K render, and just to prove it, I'll show you. 4K, it's 4000 by 2666, right? And this was an hour on a single 980 Ti, it would be 30 minutes on two of them because it's a linear scale when you add more in. So you zoom in, you can see it's a little bit noisy in there still, right? But for 30 minutes on two graphics cards like that, you could definitely use this for something. You could do a little bit of denoising in uh, Photoshop or something like that, but you can see at this resolution, it's perfectly fine. It's just, it's up to you whether or not. But when you compare this to um, using a processor, like CPU to render, you wouldn't be able to get something of this quality that quickly. It's just, you can't do it with a desktop grade CPU. You would definitely, you would need like dual Xeons and you would have to have like a server board and like a bazillion cores to be able to get something like this that quickly. This would be 30 minutes on two of them. And this was, uh, let me click this. You can see this was two hours on a single 980 Ti. So it'd be, this would be a full hour on uh, two of them like I have. And you can see when I click between them, it cleans that uh, blurry reflection up a lot nicer. So for a single hour render, you have something that you would absolutely be able to use, you know, in a production or a concept painting or something like that, which is really, really great. And for further comparison's sake, um, it's not a one-to-one. -one. This is Vaughn's render, and this is mine. I didn't take the time to set the materials up properly, and I didn't adjust the lighting enough, and it's clearly not the full hallway. But um, this was the... Um, we'll go back down to this one. This is the 30-minute the render with the two TIs, and this is his that he had to leave. I mean, he did some Photoshop post work and stuff on it as well, but he had to leave this rendering overnight is what he told me in order to get these results. Whereas this is 30 minutes or so, or an hour with uh, just one card, as opposed to using Moto's renderer. I'm gonna cram another thing in here really quick because I forgot about it. I was just doing some tests to see how it worked with replicated geometry, especially heavy stuff like trees. Cause uh, for me, it's kind of important to be able to do that sort of environment work. And uh, you can see this is a uh, thousand pixels, I believe, and we're at like 20 seconds in right now, and it looks quite nice already. If you zoom in, you can tell it's grainy and it's still resolving, but the trees kind of hide the fact that it's grainy. You'll see some grain in here in this geometry, but um, overall, for a thousand, uh, for a thousand samples at um, this resolution, it's only looking like uh, four minutes and 15 seconds, and I put. Um, my primary GPU under low priority, so it should go even faster than that. I just wanted to be able to move around the viewport and get a different view. So zoom out. Like I said, nothing special, but uh, it handles all these trees really, really nicely. All right, and I guess we'll move on to the uh, next thing now. So now that I've shown you uh, working in Moto and showing you the kind of resolution and render speeds, I'll hop over to uh, Octane super quick and just do the normal sort of benchmark that everyone tends to do with these sorts of videos. And so I'll do just uh, direct lighting on this scene. And you'll see how quickly this resolves. Um, 11 seconds for a finished render at 1,000 samples. And you see how responsive this is when you move the... Uh, camera around. This is just direct lighting, so it's not bouncing around. So it's not super accurate, but you could still use uh, direct lighting for a lot of stuff depending on what it is you're doing. So really interactive, resolves quickly. We'll do the uh, path tracing, which is a little bit slower, but it's more accurate. And so we'll see how quickly that resolves. 
So this one, as opposed to 11 seconds to finish the 1,000 samples, is looking more like 40 seconds. And you can see where it's having the hardest time is in the blurry reflections over here. And so it's taking a little bit longer to sort of resolve that stuff. You know, but for 40 seconds at this resolution, you know, that's still amazing. And this is their benchmark scene, so it's meant to sort of uh, press your card for what it can do a little bit with all the blurry reflections and geometry. And so we're approaching 40 seconds, and you'll see it's still noisy, not fully resolved, but just to give you an idea of how quick that is. And so we'll pause this, and we'll go into another Octane scene that I like to look at when I'm looking at uh, testing my cards. So we'll do the hallway scene in the bathroom. This is direct lighting, so you see how quickly that is. You could use that already, and that's only five seconds in. I mean, at this resolution, you wouldn't use it, but you get the idea. And so for path tracing, same scene in the bathroom. Obviously a little bit slower, but still resolving fairly quickly. At 1,000 samples for the two cards, it's looking like a minute and 20 seconds-ish. So we can move around in here. And you'll notice there's a little bit of lag in here as well. And so you can do the same trick that you would in Moto with uh, prioritizing your cards a little bit. But it's still, it's responsive enough to do what you need to. So let that resolve for a second. So we'll do the hallway with direct lighting. And you could see this one only eight seconds for a thousand samples. And so that is done. And so we'll do the path tracing. And you'll see this is looking like a minute and 10 seconds, give or take for the thousand samples. And so you'll notice that it's uh, fairly grainy in here, but if you're trying to compose something, it's super, super quick and responsive overall. Like I said, it's a little bit laggy, but um, it renders really quickly. So you can come in here into the bathroom if you wanted to. And this has um, focal blur on, so you could turn that off if you wanted to. Just turn the aperture down. So everything is in focus. But that's what's really great about this as well, is you can render with um, focal blur and stuff like that, and it doesn't really affect your render speeds at all. To show you an example of this, I'll open up another scene. So here's the scene with screws, and this is just direct lighting, so it'll be a lot faster. So for something like this, direct lighting is probably fine. You can do uh, the path tracing, which takes longer and has takes a little bit longer with like the uh, blurry reflections and stuff like that. So you can move around this scene. But we'll stick to the direct one really quick, just to make it a little bit faster to look at. So you can see how it's doing the blurring and stuff like that. And so it's telling us 24 seconds to finish this. And so we'll pause it really quick. And we'll turn um, the autofocus on, but we'll turn, it's not even going to matter, but we'll turn the aperture all the way down. So there's no blurring whatsoever. And we'll start it over. And you're looking at... 22 seconds, 21, 22 seconds instead. So doing the focal blur only eats up two extra seconds on a 22 second render. So we'll turn that back up. We'll go fairly high with it, like way higher than you would ever go. And 26 seconds. So like I said, not a huge render hit. And you can move this around and it'll focus on screws. Let's uh, turn the aperture back down a bit. So for like product shots and cars and stuff like that, I would choose this over key shot for a lot of stuff if you have the graphics capability. Um, the one benefit to key shot that I really like though is it's super easy to set up materials and all that. Um, if you have a plugin for one of your 3D apps, you can use Octane inside there and set up your materials that way that like you normally would. So that's totally fine. And you do have the benefit of using it inside your program. Um, key shot, you have to export everything and then drag and drop materials and so on and so forth. So it's it's more, it's quicker to use for certain applications, but if you really want a lot of control over your renders, I would say Octane is probably the way to go. Especially because if you want full resolution on a key shot render, you're spending $2,000 for a license. Whereas with Octane, you're looking at like $500 if you're getting both the plugin and the standalone version. Not that I'm trying to... Uh, convince anyone to buy it. I'm just super impressed with its rendering capabilities and speed. Like I said, if you have the graphics capability. If you have a lot older of a card, it may not work so well. Um, basically, I had a 660 Ti before I got the 980 Ti's, 
and on a single 980 Ti was four times as fast as my 660 Ti, which is pretty substantial, which means these two cards together are eight times as fast, give or take, seven to nine times as fast as the 660 Ti. So you'd still get really fast render speeds, but not quite as fast as this. Anyways, I hope that was a useful video. Um, if there are any questions, you can hit me up on Facebook if you have me on there, or just type it in the comments below and I'll see if I can get to it. Thanks a lot.